Hi, I'm Jill Johnson Young, and welcome to This is Private Practice. I want to thank Jo Muirhead for inviting me to do this today. And she asked me to come in and chat for a bit about what you do when you move your entire private practice home. And let me add as a secondary title, lickety split, because you don't have time. I have a private practice in Riverside and Marietta, California, and I co-own it with Sherry Shockey Pope, whom you've already heard from on this program. We have a large number of clinicians. We have a lot of clients. And like all the rest of you, we had very little time to prepare. I could see that this was coming, at least in the short run, in part because I'm married to someone on the national disaster team, and I was hearing the chatter to some degree about how they were getting ready and preparing and rolling out. So I knew it was coming and I knew we were going to have to close. But we don't have a playbook for this. We don't have a, this is how you shut down a practice. This is how you send everyone home. Fortunately, we did have all the technology and we're creative and we know how to Google. Underline, we know how to Google. So what do you do? Well, the basics, I cleaned out the fridge because, ew, and uh, I packed up what I thought I needed. The laptop, some of the basic stuff. We have an EHR, so that travels home with you anyway. And then when we got home and had all of our staff dispersed, our receptionists went to remote, our clients were all notified, we locked the doors. It got real. And I needed a space to work and I needed to make sure my clients knew this was real. So first off, I tried one spot in the house and it was too noisy. I have business partners here. Their names are Fred and Katen and Walter. And they really like it when the doorbell rings or the door knocks. And I hadn't worked from home before. I didn't know how often people came to our front door. And now that we're home, people come a lot more because Amazon, right? You forget you need things like postage and envelopes and you have to look decent on camera so you don't look all shadowy and all of that. As it got real, as it became apparent this was going to be for a long time, not a short time, I got honest with my clients. Now I'm a grief therapist, so because of that, I'm transparent anyway. I believe in transparency in doing therapy. My clients heard, it's not safe. I'm not going back. And we need to make this work because I'm still committed to you as your therapist. And our practice is still committed to our clients as an agency. But we're not coming back. And we're not seeing you in person because it's not safe. It just isn't. You know what I found? When you set the limits, people respond positively. When you say, I'm doing this for my health, I'm doing this for my family's health, and I'm doing this for your health, I don't want your child exposed to our waiting room where we typically have hundreds of visitors a week. We can't possibly get it cleaned enough between sessions. We can't have you there. We can't be there. We need to do it this way. What I found, and I will admit I was a little surprised, even though I was already doing some online work, my clients, all but one, wanted to stay online. They were okay with it. And a lot of them liked it better, unapologetically better. They don't have to drive to my office. They don't have to be in traffic. And I got to tell you, grief clients, there are typically tears and then folks have to walk back it out into the waiting area to leave. It's easier for them to be at home and to have some downtime after their session and to wash their face with some cold water. Being online works better for them. They also find what I have found. When you are face-to-face online, you actually get a more intense session and it's more productive. And we can also email more often using our HIPAA secure process. So I can email them their homework 
I can email them resources. When you're online, it becomes natural to do those sorts of things. It's more productive for them. It wasn't harder. It was easier. Now, what was a challenge was making the environment work. I'm now in the back of our house. The wall has been painted to pick up light. It's actually got glitter in it. You can't tell. But it sparkles a little bit, keeps the background a little brighter, a little more responsive. You pay attention more, don't you? I bet you didn't even notice until I said it. I also have a three-point lighting system. You can't see them, but I have two big banks of lights in front of me. They are very bright, they're adjustable, and they don't get hot. Spend a little more, get the ones that don't get hot, and the ones that are portable. Because that way, when we do get back to life, sort of as we used to know it, maybe, if you want to still broadcast from your office or do online, you can. And if you're like me and you travel and go to conferences, you now have an amazing portable setup so you can do some broadcasts or some video recording while you're on the road. How cool is that? I also have a very large ring light now so that if I'm doing things using my phone, which I know many of you are, I don't have the little bitty ring light. No, no. I have the ginormous ring light with a really big stable base. Now, if you're a little clumsy like me, you got to watch that base. But the good news is, if you have a business partner named Fred, if he goes flying, he's not going to dump your light over because it's got a nice, big, heavy base and it stays put. I have lighting behind me. I have colored lights behind me. See it now? I have another bright light behind me. That is because it keeps the shadows out. It keeps my eyes bright, which gives my clients and people in groups with me a, a more awake and alert looking Jill. Yes, I am awake and alert, but I look it because I'm not in shadow. I also have all outside light blocked because that way there's no shadowing coming in and there's no streaks of lights. So it doesn't hurt their eyes. That makes it easier for them. The good news is, even though I've got that blocked, I have a clock in front of me, I have a clock on my computer. That means that I can end that session on time and take my 10 minutes and go outside and get my real sunshine, which I couldn't do as easily in the office. At the office, I had to walk down a hallway, navigate past people, go down another hallway, grab an elevator, get downstairs. Half my 10 minute break was spent transporting myself to go outside. Now I walk 10 feet. Cool enough, right? I found I could do groups online. You have to get familiar with Zoom or whatever platform you're going to use. You need to practice a little bit, but it's doable. It really is. And once you adapt people to it, it works. I started out in the middle of this. I did two weeks of a grief group, entirely seniors, in person. And then suddenly we were online. And every last one of them made the transition. We had to put a little more time into making it work, but it did. And by the time we finished, yeah, group of seniors, they had figured out how to do the background. They were coming and going like they were zooming in and out. One was switching the background every five minutes because they figured out the technology and they did it because of me. And they stayed online. They're still friends and seeing each other. I hear about it every once in a while. It reconnected some people who'd all lost spouses. And now they can see each other on a regular basis. And they check in with each other. It actually created more connections for them. Because we're online in a pandemic. There are pluses to this, folks. Now, I've told my clients I'm not going back anytime soon. And again, I've done it unapologetically. And what I am finding is I'm getting more clients now because they know I'm online. They're finding me online. They want a safe therapist who can do the work, who's not going to put them at risk. You set your boundaries. You create an environment. You set your mindset to be, this is how it's going to be. And I'm going to make this work and it's going to feel good to my clients. And it will. I'll see you guys online. 
Thank you for being here for This is Private Practice. And thank you, Joe Muirhead.